the unit conversions for squared and cubed units. And the question is how to convert from meters cubed to centimeters cubed. And centimeters cubed is equivalent to milliliters as we've already discussed. Or meters squared to centimeters squared. When all we know is that, for example, one meter equals 100 centimeters. So that we can memorize. Question is meters cubed to centimeters cubed. And to do that, what you need to do, and as long as you do the same thing to both sides, it is mathematically equivalent. We're going to cube both sides. And the cubed part looks like this. So one cubed meter cubed equals 100 cubed centimeters cubed. One cubed is just still one. And 100 cubed, well, when in doubt, pull out your trusty calculator. 100 times 100 times 100. And I get 1 million. centimeters cubed is equal to one meter cubed because one times one times one is still just one. So writing this all together, one meter cubed equals one million centimeters cubed. And this principle always works. If you have something that's squared, for example, and you know the conversion factor, if it's not squared, square both sides to get the answer. Um, let's do an example. It says, what is the volume of a fish tank in liters? Uh, or, sorry, in, of a fish tank in liters of a fish tank can be taken out that measures 36 inches by 12 inches by 16 inches. So volume is uh, length times width times height. So I'm gonna do this calculation first. It's gonna end, <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter, as long as we multiply these three things together. So 36 inches times 12 inches times 16 inches thirty six times twelve times sixteen I get six thousand nine hundred twelve and my inches are now cubed and now this is going to be my given I don't know how many unit conversion factors I'm going to go for. And so I, I don't, I know that I want one milliliter equals centimeters cubed. Let's see. So I know that I want um, one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed. I've got centimeters cubed to, no, that's not going to help me. I, oh, I know that one milliliter equals one times 10 to the minus three liters, because I want my answer to be in liters, but I still need to get from centimeters cubed to inches cubed, let's say. I do know that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters, and that's something, well, just for kicks, let's look at our conversion and equation table here. I do not see it. So probably write it on my unit, uh, my conversion table here because I'm going to need it. And the exams and quizzes for this course are open book, open notes since it's an online course. It's okay to write it on. I guess you could write on that Kelvin uh, conversion factor too. Now let's see. So Q 
cube both sides and I get that one inch cubed because one cubed is still one equals 2.54 cubed centimeters cubed. And that's the set of units that we need that are going to be the hardest to come by here. All right. So 2.54 times 2.54 times 2.54 equals 16.387. Uh, we don't need that many sig figs, but let's keep a couple extra. So one inch cubed equals 16.387 centimeters cubed. Now I have units of centimeters cubed, and I can convert centimeters cubed into milliliters. And I can convert milliliters into liters. I have all ones on the bottom, which are my divided by, so it's going to be simple math down there. But I do have to multiply all my numbers across the top. 6912 times 16. 387. When in my equals here, it seems like I entered that right. I hope so. Then I'm going to hit times 1 exponent 3 minus. And I get that that fish tank is 113 to 3 significant figures. Liters. And we could convert it uh, using our conversion equation sheet. It looks like, oh, we've got quarts to milliliters on here. We could put liters to gallons too on there if we wanted. And there's our final answer. Now, introduction to nomenclature. So I've got my nomenclature handout right here. We've got elements to memorize, measurement prefixes to memorize, common molecular compounds to memorize, and ions to memorize. And that is what we're going to do all semester. So I've got my nomenclature sheet here. It says um, elements to memorize, prefixes, common molecular compounds, and oops, common ions to memorize as well. You want to know the formula and the name. Looks like you do not have to memorize hydronium right there from a previous note that I've taken, but you do have to memorize everything else. And you'll see on the homework, it's flat out memorization. This is the same list that I, we use in general chemistry. So that's why we're going to start early. And you will have homework pretty much every week to do these. If we were meeting face-to-face, -face, we would have a nomenclature quiz at some point during the semester. Since this is an online class, we're just going to do it by doing it over and over and over again. That's how I'm going to hopefully get you to memorize all these in preparation for your general chemistry class. And that's it for this lecture outline. Yay!